The cumulative sum or Q sum charts produced by the SRTR provide programs with a tool for internal quality improvement. The charts allow programs to better track day to day performance each month. SRTR has been tasked by HRSA to produce tools for transplant programs to monitor their own performance. The QSUM chart is one such tool. SRTR began releasing post-transplant QSUM charts to all liver, kidney, heart, and lung programs in July of 2013. Later, SRTR added QSUMs for offer acceptance for transplant programs and organ yield for OPOs. SRTR decided to produce QSUM charts that monitor a rolling three-year period that advances monthly. This allows programs to consider current performance in light of historical performance over the last three years. QSUM charts present three years of transplant data for a program to review as an overall long-term view. You can change the range to focus on a shorter, more specific range. SRTR produces separate reports for adult and pediatric cohorts. Separate charts for living and deceased donor cohorts exist. SRTR does not release QSUM charts publicly since they are intended to be used for internal quality improvement, but programs and OPOs can choose to share them. They are found on the SRTR Secure site. Click on Reports on the navigation bar, then you'll see a submenu at the left of the screen. Select QSUMs here. You will need to have access to your program secure site in order to view them. Contact your program's transplant administrator to gain access. To produce the QSUM charts, SRTR receives a full copy of the OPTN database monthly. This OPTN data also includes supplemental death information provided through sources other than the transplant programs. To identify additional deaths and dates of resumption of maintenance of dialysis following a kidney transplant. The chart's three-year period ends one month before the date the chart is released. For example, charts released in April 2021 include data in the three-year period from March 1, 2018 through February 28, 2021. The one-month window is necessary to allow for lag in data transfer and processing. The lag is based on getting data from OPTN, standard analysis file generation, producing the QSUMs themselves, and posting the QSUMs to the secure site. QSUMs show a three-year period of the graphs following patients who were alive for patient survival or alive with a functioning graft for graft survival for at least one day within their first year post-transplant during the three-year QSUM period. If an event occurred in the first year after transplant, it shows as an event on the chart. QSUMs follow patients at risk for three years. The PSRs, on the other hand, look at a sample or cohort of recipients transplanted in a 2.5-year time frame, and SRTR reports on what happened with those recipients in their first month, year, or three years post-transplant. The QSUM charts change every month, so the sample of recipients followed also changes slightly. The PSR cohorts only change every six months. For graft and patient survival charts, recipients are included if alive for at least one day during the period. Any grafts or primary deaths are included as of the day of the transplant. Recipients contribute to the charts only on the days when they were at risk. Like PSR metrics, recipients of retransplants are excluded from the patient survival QSUM charts, but are included in the graft survival charts. Transplant recipients are monitored only during the first year post-transplant. Any events, that is deaths or failures, that may occur beyond day 365 post-transplant do not affect the QSUM chart. Events before the represented period began are excluded from the chart. Recipients that experience graft failure or death after their first follow-up year are removed. The observed minus expected QSUM chart plots the difference between the number of cumulative events that were observed on a given day and the number of cumulative events that were expected to be observed on a given day. On each day the program experiences a graph failure or death, the QSUM line will jump upward. On each day that no events occur, the QSUM line will trend downward, as expected events continue to accumulate. A program experiencing graph failures or patient deaths at a rate higher than expected will see its O minus E QSUM line trend upward. Conversely, a program experiencing events at a rate lower than expected will see its O minus E QSUM line trend downward. A program whose performance is consistent with expectation will see its line remain relatively stable over time.
on a typical day, every program, even the largest programs, have zero graph failures and zero deaths. So the number of expected events at each program is a little more than zero. It depends on the program volume and patient risks, but it is always close to zero. So every day where there are zero events, there are slightly fewer events than expected. So the line goes down. Every day that there is an event, there are slightly more events than expected on that day. So the line goes up. Imagine a program that is expected to have four events per year. The number of expected events per day will be about four divided by 365 equaling 0 0.011. So every day that there are zero events, there are 0 0.011 fewer events than expected. But on a day where there is an event, there will be 0.989 more events than expected. On average, over a whole year, if there are four events, there will be four days where the line goes up 0 0.989, and 361 days where the line goes down 0 0.011, which sums to about zero. If there were only three events instead of the expected four events, the sum over the year would be about negative one, since there was one fewer event than expected. Similarly, if there were five events, the sum over the year would be about plus one, since there was about one more event than expected. Some fluctuation in the Q-sum line is expected simply due to random variation. Expected outcomes are determined from a set of risk-adjusted models maintained by SRTR. These are the same models used to determine observed versus expected outcomes presented in the standard PSRs. And those risk adjustment models can be found on the SRTR website at www.srtr.org. Because the O minus E Q sums may trend up or down due to random chance, programs may wonder whether an apparent trend in the O minus E Q sum is likely due to chance or likely due to something under the control of the program. The one sided Q sum charts check whether a negative trend in the O minus E Q sum would be unusual if entirely due to chance. It performs a statistical comparison of 1. The likelihood of observing the program's outcomes if the program truly performed as expected compared with 2. The likelihood of observing the outcomes if the program truly had twice the expected event rate. Since the number of expected events varies from day to day, the size of the jump would normally vary, and for most programs the number of expected events on any one day is close to zero. So SRTR sets the jump at approximately 0.69 for each event. But the interpretation of the Q-sum value and accompanying y-axis are less important to interpreting the one-sided Q-sum. Rather, one should use the chart to identify when the data are approaching a predetermined threshold of interest. The one-sided Q-sum hypothetically accumulates evidence that the transplant program may have elevated event rates. The line will increase if the hypothetical evidence is present. The line cannot drop below the starting point at the leftmost end of the time period, and the line will trend upward when events occur. When the signal occurs, the chart resets to the baseline level and monitoring resumes from zero. The specific location of the threshold is designed for each program individually based on the expected event rates for patients included in each chart for the given date range. Specifically, we simulate 500 QSUM charts for each program, assuming the program is performing as expected based on its daily expected event rate. We determine the highest point reached. The threshold is chosen to be the 95th percentile of the 500 maximum values. This yields the location of the 5% threshold. A signal in a previous period may not show up in your current charts. The QSUM charts are produced with the available data. Any QSUMs run with the current data set and based on those current data may not show a signal. You may still see that spike in the old QSUM charts because they are run on the data that were available at that time and are static. For example, here you can see the highest spikes exceeded the threshold level. At some point in the past, those peaks would have hit a threshold in order to reset, but now the threshold is much lower. QSUM charts are not used for flagging criteria. The charts target different patterns of program performance than the Membership and Professional Standards Committee or MPSC review criteria. QSUMs are tuned to identify short periods of worse than expected outcomes, while MPSC review criteria are tuned to identify worse than expected outcomes on average over a longer period of time. So a QSUM signal does not necessarily mean that a program will be flagged by the MPSC, nor does the lack of a QSUM signal indicate that a program will not be flagged. 
Data tables containing patient level information for recipients included in the charts are provided. These can be used to investigate the specific recipients and data that contribute to the accompanying QSUM charts. The columns of data included are the same as the variables used in the risk adjustment models. You will find recipients in the tables with transplants dating back one year prior to the beginning of the chart time frame because patients are followed for one year post-transplant. Recipients whose graphs failed or who died before the chart's reporting period began are removed from the tables. Patients with graphs that failed or who died after one year are removed from the tables after their one year follow-up, so the tables only include recipients that are alive or that had a failure or death within their first year. For more specific information on how to use these tools and resources, contact an SRTR representative at srtr at srtr.org.